Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's reading vlog. Today we are going to be letting mini books choose the books that I read. So I've been wanting to do this video idea for a while now, but I wanted to do it in a way where I'm kind of surprised with the books that I'm getting, the mini books, and I wanted to have it kind of like blindly choosing through mini books. I didn't want to know what books in the mini version I'm going to be reading and going to be choosing to read. It's just a really cute version of books that you can do different things with. So I thought it would be fun to have them pick the books that I read this week. I just want to take a few minutes here if you'll let me boast is that the right word and just thank the bestie that made me these mini books she has a shop it's called the sticker shop she has a few things on there that you can get but she also has the mini books so i found her on etsy and you can type in the book that you want as a mini book but i asked her if it was possible to send me any 10 books in a mini version and she went above and beyond i am just so completely appreciative for her sending me these books but i just want to show you what she has sent me because the package that i got and how sweet and thoughtful it was is just it was just one of my favorite things to receive she not only sent me mini books but she included in this package package three keychains that are book inspired it's like a book stack she also included stickers of a book stack which is just the cutest thing ever she also sent over custom polaroids so i was able to send her pictures of me and my friends and my dogs and just put them in a custom polaroid that i'm so excited to put somewhere in my room it is the cutest thing ever and not only did she send me mini books wrapped up with the different genres that they are so i can choose blindly one they are wrapped up so cute but she also sent me a few of my five star reads as mini books now when i tell you Anything mini is just cuter. Some of them, there's a Magnolia Parks one, there's a Daisy Jones and the Six, Powerless, Rock, Paper, Scissors, Beach Read, like there's a few in here. And it was just so, again, thoughtful. So I cannot thank you, Bestie, enough for doing this for me. And then, of course, again, she wrapped them and put the genre that's in them. And it is just so cute. And I am so excited to have these little mini books choose the books we're gonna read. I'll have her shop linked in the description below. She is just so kind, so sweet for doing this. And if you're interested in any mini books, highly highly recommend shopping on her shop i'm kind of in a romance mood so i think we're gonna choose from one of the romance ones i have four romance mini books we're just gonna shuffle through and see which ones we get oh one of them fell out of my hand i think we're gonna have to go with this one i'm so excited to see what it is see if i even have it on my tbr or we may have to take a barn trip okay you guys look at it first i'm gonna look away can you see what it is <gasps> Oh my gosh, it's Nora Goes Off Script by Annabelle Monaghan. I guess I really am a mood reader with the different seasons because since it's getting warmer out, I've just been in such a romance mood. And this one is completely giving summer vibes, summer romances. We're gonna have to take a barn trip, which is also really exciting. I've heard great things about this book and I feel like it'll get me right into that summer mood, which is exactly what I'm craving right now. So let's go buy the book and let's start reading our first book based off this little mini one. How cute is she? Okay, let's go to Barnes. I started this yesterday a little bit like later in the night not in the night later in the day evening time if you will i've been carrying around the mini book with it because i think it's just so cute i can't get over how cute it is but i just got to page 70 on chapter six and the story i didn't really know what it was about going into it it's from the cover i just felt like it's just a beach read like you pick this up you go read on a beach and you just like binge it on a day in the beach which i wish i was doing that i wish i just went to the beach early one morning brought this book with me sat all day and just finished it on the beach like that is just a perfect setting for this book it's about this mom nora who's a romance channel like screenwriter like she writes those kind of like hallmarky movies and she lives in this small town and she's recently divorced i don't know 
most recent, but she's divorced. Her husband left her. She was kind of like holding the fort at home. She has two kids at home. And since she's a screenwriter, she wrote a movie that's not gonna be on the romance channel, but it's gonna be just made into like a real time movie. Kind of inspired by her divorce and her marriage and kind of what happened there. They're filming it at her house. They have these two huge Hollywood stars coming. There's trailers there and everything. They're filming and then they wrap up in three days. They leave and the main actor, the famous Hollywood guy stays back. And that's kind of where the story I feel like picks up and starts. You have these two characters, Leo and Nora. They're very different. She's small town, is a single mother. He's Hollywood star, but he's going through things that we don't really unearth that just yet. Their dynamic is very interesting. She's letting him stay with her. And that's kind of like the basis of the storyline. It's very fast paced. I really like that you get just like right into it. You don't really get like her marriage and her divorce and everything. It's right when she's telling you what she does and that there is people coming onto her lawn, directors and filmmakers and producers and everything. You get right into that part of the storyline. And it's really, really fast paced. Like it's just flowing really nicely. The pacing is really nice. I feel like we're just getting like right into it. I'm getting to know these characters and what's going on and their dynamic and their banter between each other. And I'm interested to see where it's gonna go, especially because it's a pretty short book. I think it's only like 260 pages and I'm interested to see like what she puts into that because we already have like the, the, the structure. We have the structure and the foundation of everything I feel like at this point. So I'm excited to see where the development comes in and where how we're gonna get to the end. So far, so good. I'm really enjoying it. Again, I wish it was it's kind of nice how it was raining this morning, but it's getting nicer out. I wanna read this like outside. I wanna be outside while reading this book. That's just the vibes it gives off. I read a little bit more and at first I was like, I don't know if I'm loving Leo. I don't know if it was just like the first impressions, you know, he's the Hollywood star, but he's like slowly like growing on me. And it's like, just so like, what's the word? Heartwarming, like the way that he's acting, especially with her and her kids. And like, not in like a romantic way, even just like platonically, the way that he's acting now. And he's like really like growing on me. And I feel like also growing on Nora and the way that it's like slowly happening is like so cute. And the things that he's just like showing interest in and stuff and like the dynamic of Nora and her ex and what happened between them and then how Leo's now acting. It's just really cute. I'm really, really, really enjoying it. It's so sweet. It's now so gloomy outside. I wish it was nice out so I can like really feel the full effects of this book, but it is so cute right now. I'm really, really loving it. <laughs> Stop. All of a sudden I'm really loving him and her and all of this. but I just read a really cute scene and now I have no idea what I was gonna say. So hopefully that comes back to me. I don't know if you can hear me because there's a lawnmower going, but it's so cute and it just feels so almost realistic in a way, like the way that they're like connecting. It's so cute. a different turn than I thought it was gonna take or I guess it, it went in a different way like in my head I was like maybe this is five star there's like a little inkling but I don't know how I feel now I have like I think 
30 pages left. I don't know, the beginning when I was like, it was so cute, like that part of it, I was really enjoying, like it felt like a really cute romance in a small town, you know, their dynamic was really cute. And then it like took a turn really like early on in the book with something that usually happens like closer to the end. And it's like this really drawn out experience. But first I didn't like that it took that turn, but now like being so in the thick of it, I'm really enjoying where the story went. It could have gone down like the cliche route with the whole relationship between the two of them. And I could have like kind of guessed what was gonna happen, but it went a completely different direction. And I really appreciate that. It's included some scenes and some things that are happening that I just didn't expect, which I really liked. I thought I was gonna be able to like kind of predict how the story was gonna go and like the structure of it and everything, but I'm really enjoying where it ended up going. I feel like it was less rom com -y and giving like that stuff and kind of switched to more of just like a, just like the contemporary fiction moments, but also has like the romance mixed in and like those elements in it as well in Nora's point of view obviously but you get a lot of Nora and I really like Nora as a character I feel like she's very not relatable because I'm not a single mom and I haven't gone through what she's gone through but as a person she seems really relatable she has like humor and a lot of things and the way that she like thinks about situations and stuff going on feels really real and realistic and I really like her and I'm really liking this story we'll have to see how it ends because I don't know how we're gonna mend this right now but so far still so good I'm really enjoying the way this is written the storyline the characters like it's really 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 good wait why am i crying that's so This was so cute. I have finished Nora Goes Off Script. I had the best time reading this book. I, again, kind of wish I was sitting on a beach binging this. If you have not read this and you want to wait till summertime, highly recommend. This is the perfect little beach read. It was also the most perfect page cap length <laughs> also yeah page count same thing i feel like if it was any longer it would have been too drawn out i feel like she put in the most perfect parts of the story to really just like make it all make sense and have such a beautiful well-rounded story i for some reason really love in books when one of them is like hollywood super famous and then they come kind of back down to earth and find themselves in like a small town i think it is so cute it reminds me of some of my favorite books like ghosted by jm darhauer had a celebrity male main character and so did happily never after playlist but one thing i liked about like this small town Town romance is that the male main character was the one that came to the small town. I feel like usually in these small towns you have our female main character, the one that we're following, comes from a big city or is new to the small town and you kind of find out about the small town through her eyes. But this one, Nora, was our main character that lived in the small town. That's where her roots are. That's where her kids and her family and her life is. And you have this outside source, this outside man coming in. It's from Hollywood, no less. And I really, really, really loved her two kids in this. I love the scenes that they were in. I loved what they brought to the story. It wasn't too much, but when they were in a scene, it like made it feel Feel more and more emotional in some parts too. I really connected to it. I loved the characters. This is one that maybe I'll forget parts of it as time goes on, but I would probably recommend this one for a really long time. That leaves me with my rating and I think I'm gonna give it a 4.5. It was so good. At some points I was like, is this a five star? But then I was like, I don't know. I'm not fully feeling it, but it was so good. Highly, highly recommend. I'm so happy we started off on such a good foot. Thank you to my first mini book for choosing such a good read. I think since we just did a romance, let's do a different genre. Feeling either a mystery or a thriller. I think we're gonna go with the mystery. Let's open up our mystery mini blind book. You guys look at it first. I'm gonna look away. What is our next book? Ooh! Eight Detectives by Alex Pavesi. This is so fun because it's a book I haven't heard of. This book is called Eight Detectives by Alex Pavesi, but there's a book called The Eighth Detective by Alex Pavesi. Are these the same books or are these different books? I'm so confused. Okay, so they're the same book. Maybe he just changed the title slash cover. I'm not sure what happened there. Let's try to look this up again. Why is eighth such a hard word to spell? <laughs> Let's look up what this book is about. All murder mysteries follow a simple set of rules. Grant McAllister, an author of crime fiction and professor of mathematics, once sat down and worked them all out until Julia Hart, a sharp, ambitious editor, knocks on his door. His early work is being republished and together the two of them must revisit those old stories. But as she reads, Julia is unsettled to realize that there are things in the stories that don't make sense, intricate clues that seem to reference a real murder, one that's remained unsolved for 30 years. But she must tread carefully. She knows there's a mystery, but she doesn't yet realize there's already been a murder. I think I'm going to buy this one on Kindle, start it in a little bit, and I'll give you guys updates. I don't know why that was such a confusing process for me, but it's fine. I'm going to go download this book, and we are going to start our next mini book. It is 
the next day i've only gotten 25 pages into this book but so far what i've gathered is it's a mystery actually i haven't gathered a lot what i do know is they're including math or the guy has written a book a mystery book and he studied math and he's including mathematical stuff into the murder mystery to like make his all I know is they're including math now and I don't really want to read about that. I think I'm just going to soft DNF it just for now because I don't think I want to sit and read about what they're talking about. This isn't a full DNF. Maybe we'll get back to this, but I think just for now I want to start a different book. This one's short too. It's only 292 pages, so maybe we'll get back to it. But I've decided for the time being we're going to choose a different mini book, but actually, not we. I'm going to have... <laughs> Chris is going to choose the next mini book. Let me get them. Which genre are you thinking? Um... Really think about... Me. What is it? What, fiction? What? Fiction, thriller, and romance. Fiction. Damn. Okay. I was gonna do thriller. That's a risky one, fiction. <clears throat> There's only two fiction ones here. <laughs> okay. Oh! I know what to do here. <laughs> It's an Ellen Hildebrand book. Let's take it out of the packaging. The book that was in there is Golden Girl by Ellen Hildebrand. It's actually on my summer TBR, which is perfect timing because like I said, I want to start reading summary books right now. I actually have this book, which is also really good. It is on my TBR. Let me find it. This is so exciting. If you don't know, Ellen Hildebrand is the queen of summer beach trees. I actually met her last year at her book signing. She's coming out with a new book, her last one in her Nantucket series this June, next month. So I'm really, really excited to read this one. I want to end up reading the, all of her books that she's written. She's written so many but she mostly writes or i think all of them take place or majority of them take place on nantucket i don't really know what this one's about but i'm gonna start this one i will let you guys know i'm very excited i love ellen's writing and stories and this one's gonna put me in the summer mood for sure <laughs> the gist of what the story is so i'm only 40 ish pages in but from all of the ellen Hildebrand books that i've read so far she tells them in all of the characters point of views all of like the main ish characters third person but you get like their viewpoint on things and this one the main story and the main character is vivi she is a mom of three she lives on nantucket one day she's involved in a hit and run on her run and you get the point of view of a character from the beyond i think her name is martha and she is assigned to vivi so when vivi passes and she goes into the beyond martha's gonna help her along she's giving vivi three nudges she can look over her kids and she can use these three nudges to kind of push whatever she wants in the right direction that's kind of what the main story is and you're getting a point of view obviously of her as a mom and her relationship with her kids and her life story and then you're also getting kids point of views and what's going on in their lives and what i really like about ellen hildebrand's writing is even though i feel like her demographic is specifically for like moms because a lot of the main character point of views you get in her books are of like a mom point of view and i feel like she kind of puts herself into these characters sometimes like i feel like the way she's writing about about Nantucket like she's writing from experience and I love that she uses that you can kind of see it through her writing and especially the mom characters that she's had her experience with her kids and living on Nantucket like she takes real life things kind of like sprinkles them in and I feel like that in like real life mom figures would really connect to her writing I feel like that's why that demographic is so strong with her writing because the way that she takes inspiration from her own mom life and on Nantucket and all of these different things that she puts in but I like how she does it because it feels very realistic and even though I'm not a mom in any way it's just like it I could feel the mom energy and i love that so much and i love the way she writes it flows really well but all of a sudden we'll be like present timeline and present point of view of what's happening and then all of a sudden you kind of kind of get like a flashback of this is what happened here and she like it flows really well her pacing is really really good especially having so many different character point of views and in third person like i love the way she sets up her stories i love the way that she makes them flow in the pacing i wish i was on a beach right now again this is another perfect summer read ellen hildebrand is the queen of summer reads that's okay it's sunny out i'm getting the vibes anyway and i'm interested to see if this is going to be one of my favorite Ellen Hildebrand books because right now it is the Hotel Nantucket. So. I think I'm almost in 
looks like I'm halfway of this book. It's about 375 pages. I'm on 182. Let's do some math. Let's use this calculator. Oh, halfway is 187. I'm on 182. So we are just about to hit halfway. I don't really remember what I said last time I talked about this book because I've been reading this book for a while now. It's been a few days. It was a slow start. I think that's what it was getting into it. She really throws out a bunch of characters and you don't really connect to them until you get more information about them. Like in the beginning, she's just writing about them as if you should care about what's going on and like you should be like already connected to them. It's very interesting the way that she like introduces her characters. What I really love about Ellen's books is she gives kind of like the tea between all of these characters and how their kind of lives and relationships are intertwined but you don't really realize it until you're getting like slowly into it and you switch a point of view and all of a sudden they know more information about what someone else is going through than you really thought and it's like that tea section of like being on Nantucket and this like family's live and like all these people that are connected to them getting that is kind of fun and interesting like you're really just getting the tea on all these people but what I like about this one is it's also connected to what happened to Vivi so you have the chief Ed Kapanash, who's also in the first book I ever read by Alan Hildebrand, The Perfect Couple. He is the chief of police on Nantucket and he's on the case of what happened, who hit Vivi, like what happened to her really, and he's like trying to be like detective. So you get like small little point of views of him and I really like that part. It's kind of like a mystery going on, but you're also getting the lives of the children, the relationships that Vivi had with people after the fact, and obviously her watching from beyond. And I like everyone's point of view and knowing more about them in their point of view but the one i don't really love is vivi which is really interesting i feel like hers would have been the most interesting i think i said this but ellen i feel like is putting a lot of herself into vivi like she's a author that writes primarily nantucket novels and she loves nantucket she gives so much detail on nantucket which usually is like okay it makes me want to like go visit nantucket i think that's kind of what she tries to do painting this picture of how beautiful nantucket is and giving you all the details and kind of makes you want to go there which it has done to me in the past before she's doing it so much in this one with like specific streams and all this like it's getting very like the attention to detail is really there but when I'm reading it I'm just like I don't I don't really care like that much like let's get back into like the tea and the murder mystery and stuff so I'm not loving her point of view it's also giving the background of her sometimes and how she came to Nantucket and stuff and I'm just like not too interested in her backstory but I am liking and enjoying all the other point of views it's really really interesting again how they're all like, kind of intertwined and I like how Vivi like I said she is a author and it's kind of playing out after she passes like all of the events that are happening is almost playing out as if it was one of the novels that she wrote like on Nantucket like all of the tea we're getting and what's happening between these two characters or what's happening over here like it feels like almost like one of her novels is coming to life like so much is like coming to light and I really like that so it's really good I just think it's a little bit slow for me to like read and get into because at some points I'm really interested of what she's telling us and what's going on and then at other points I'm like not too interested so it's like half and half there's so much kind of going on between everyone we're all at different places right now so I'm interested to see like how it's all gonna connect and how we're all gonna come together they also had a little cameo of the perfect couple in this book on page 157 it says the chief takes a left on this road whatever and it says it's been three years since the last homicide on nantucket the maid of honor in a lavish wedding at a waterfront estate whatever was found floating in the harbor and that is the exact summary of the perfect couple like the maid of honor ends up dead the morning of the wedding and that's like the whole summary of it so that was fun i love how they're all intertwined like all of these books take place in like the same nantucket like obviously they're all in nantucket but it's like the same group of people like you'll see some pop up that are in other books and that's what's really fun about it too those are my thoughts right now i'm not like absolutely loving it but I'm having a good time. mini book is done. I just finished actually listening to Golden Girl. I listened to the last maybe like 40% which I really enjoyed the narration of it and someone like reading it out to me. Only one I've ever listened to but they're probably really good on audio because of the way that she tells stories. It's again like just giving tea and stuff I feel like listening to it and like background of like doing things is very entertaining very fun. This one I don't know my rating on it just yet. It's not my favorite by her. I do like the concept that she used of the one person that is like kind of the center of all these characters and her going to the beyond and now they have to figure 
figure out like one what happened to her two how to cope and move on and three like going through grief but also like finding things out like a lot of things again are intertwining and it's very entertaining but some parts were slow for me it felt kind of repetitive in some parts like a lot of her other books which makes sense because she writes about Nantucket in like all of her books so that repetitiveness it just I knew we were gonna be talking about Nantucket a lot obviously it takes place there but she really like throws in the Nantucket in like some parts where I just get a little bit bored and I felt a little bit repetitive with like other characters I've read about and like other books just a little bit other than that I had a good time it was entertaining I'm not attached to any of the characters I wasn't really like connected to anything that was going on just like on an entertainment level I had a good time listening and reading it but I'll probably never really remember these characters or think about them in any way so I think I'm gonna put it in like the three and a half star range that's probably where I'll sit with this I would recommend it if you want again a beach read honestly any of her books but this one definitely again is entertaining and I could picture myself sitting on a beach just binging this one it's also interesting because her new book that comes out I think it's called Swan Song and on page three or four and I like towards the end of this book she's like learning about something and then in her point of view the mom's point of view she's like she marvels over the story she thinks that it would make one hell of a novel it falls right into her wheelhouse the swan dive she would call it and I thought that was interesting because her newest and last release in the Nantucket series and her Nantucket world is called I think it's Swan Song that comes out soon so I thought that was funny a little snippet she put in here I don't know if it's gonna connect to what she was talking about in this book but it was interesting that that title is gonna be kind of the one that she's using so that was very fun the sun is being weird right now I'm so sorry that the lightning is now going crazy all right i thought we can do one more little mini book together i keep looking at them and i just really want to know what's underneath all of them so i thought why not one more i'm in a big romance mood like i said i don't know i'm switching over to my summer vibes and that just happens to be romance and there's only three left so i don't know how we're gonna pick this we might have to eeny meeny miny mo this one or maybe i'll close my eyes and just actually it was eeny meeny miny mo do i remember the song eeny meeny miny mo catch the tiger by so if he hollers let him go my mother said to wait hold on I don't know what it is. I forget the song. Okay, we're just gonna shuffle. Should I ask my mom? Let's ask my mom. <laughs> She's coming. <laughs> She's gonna be so excited. <laughs> Come in. Okay, nope. I have these three little blind mini books. You have to pick one. <laughs> That's what I was gonna do. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. That one? Eeny, 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 eeny. You have to pick one. This one. Okay. Hi. Okay, bye, thank you. Let's see what this one is. I'm gonna close my eyes. Here we go. What is it? What is it? We have a Taylor Jenkins Reid book. I've heard about this book. I think it's about some type of marriage situation. I'm not 100% sure. I've heard, I think, mixed reviews of this one, if I am remembering correctly, but I'll update you guys. I'll let you know. So since this is our last book we are reading together, Chris and I decided to open up the rest of the blind little mini books because we were just really interested to see what was in them. So right in the Barnes parking lot, we opened all of them. I'm pretty sure there was two romance three thriller or two thriller and one fiction. I don't know exactly which genres were left. We ended up opening all of them. There was one that I already read, but I was really interested to see what was under them. Then we went into Barnes. I checked out and looked at the books that I don't have. A couple of them I do have on my shelves, but we were walking around and I was like, I don't know if I want to read after I do. Maybe I want to read one of the other books we got. And I was like, now that I have these options in front of me, I kind of want to choose a different one. So I was between After I Do and Hello Strangers. So after thinking more on this, me and Chris decided to do the one thing we do in our relationship to decide literally any choice, and that is rock, paper, scissors so he was after i do i was hello stranger of course i won and i got hello stranger and that is the next book we will be reading this is by Catherine center the same author as the bodyguard and i've been wanting to read this one for a while so i am excited about this i'm gonna keep after i do on my radar on my tbr to read one day but we are switching it up we're gonna read hello stranger instead it feels so weird that i can wear this in videos now i almost multiple times in this specific video wore our merch that's so crazy to say by the time this video is out you guys can shop if you have shopped um, our merch with house of jupiter we have four pieces this crew neck comes in this and a t-shirt and then we have another t-shirt and then another crew neck i will link everything down below but it feels crazy that i can wear this in the video now and not like try to hide it or have to switch my sweatshirt because i did that multiple times update on hello stranger because i just did not think i'd be reading this in this video i am now over halfway i'm 214 pages into this book i started this yesterday no the day before yesterday. I really like the storyline of this. If you don't know what Hello Stranger is about, it's about this girl who's an artist and she's kind of like working to make ends meet to try to prove to her father they don't have a good relationship. She doesn't have a good relationship with her stepmom either. She's trying to prove that what she decided to do with her life being in the art world is working. Then something happens and she ends up having facial blindness, which I really enjoyed that part of the storyline. I feel like I've read another book, I think it was Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney, that the male main character in that one had facial blindness, but it was kind of more of just a fact, like we didn't really get into it, but this, you're getting into it and kind of see 
seeing how it affects the day-to-day -day life of someone with facial blindness, which I really, really love reading about that. It's very interesting to see like how it affects them, especially as an artist trying to paint portraits of people. Like it's very difficult. So I really like that, but I just can't connect to our main character. I don't know what it is about her. I've been trying to figure it out as I've been listening. So I read the beginnings of this and then I've been listening to it last night and this morning. That's how I got pretty far into it. I do like the audiobook. I think it's helping me more because like I said, I'm not invested into it. So she kind of just like jumps to conclusions really, really quick and then she runs with it. So I'm just like, I, I can't really connect with her and I don't really like love her as a main character, but I'm really interested in her story and like what's happening with her. I just don't love sometimes what she does and says, I guess. But I also thought this was going to be primarily a romance novel, but I feel like that's kind of like a subplot of what's going on. I wish I knew that because I went into it really excited for a romance because this author, Catherine Center, also wrote The Bodyguard, which I love that book so much. I was kind of assuming it was going to be that vibes, but it's not really like that. It's more just you're getting the story of our main character, which I don't know her name, Sadie, and what's going on with her. And then it's like a sprinkle of romanticness, but it's not really a, I don't, I can't really explain it, but it's not really a romance is what I'm trying to say. And I assumed it was going to be. All that being said, I'm enjoying it. It's not like my favorite. I'm not really invested in it, but listening to it, I'm entertained and I'm intrigued to see like how it's going to end, what's going to happen and everything. So those are my thoughts so far. I'm going to go listen to the rest of it today and give an update on a rating and how I feel about the end of it. I did hear there's like something towards the end of it that's like not what you would expect. So of course my brain is thinking about every possible outcome, but we'll see how it goes. I'm not dating Dr. I think I know exactly what's happening right now. And I guessed this so early on. I'm like so confused. I know I just, this doesn't feel like a romance, but I don't even know what the storyline is. It's so interesting. Like I feel like it's focusing on like I said, her and her painting and her facial blindness, but then it's also like this. I guess it's the romance part and the romance plot of this book, but it just doesn't feel like a romance at all. I don't know how this is gonna all... Like, I, I don't wanna say it, but like, I don't like feel anything going on in the romance field in this book because I think that she's kind of like, what's the word? You know how I said she jumps to conclusions? She's kind of just like delusional in a, in a way, like the way she just like makes things up and like, I don't know, but I just can't connect to the romance part of this. And I think that's where it's like falling flat a little bit. Like I just see it and I'm like so interested to see how it's gonna all connect and like how everything's gonna be solved. Like I just don't, I'm conflicted here. Okay, I just finished Hello Stranger. I listened to the rest of it. I listened to majority of this book, honestly. I only read maybe the first 50 pages and then I knew I wasn't really getting too into it. So the audiobook definitely helped. I had a fun time listening to it and hearing the story, even though it kind of frustrated me. I don't really know how to explain my feelings on this one, but I'm gonna try my best. So like I said, I really liked the story storyline of where it was going with the facial blindness you know she's an artist and the struggles that she's going through with that but like the other side of it like the romance that was coming in I just could not connect like it did not feel realistic to me also there's more stuff you find out throughout the book that I just like knew was happening early on and the way the main character like I don't want to say anything without giving it away but it was just like frustrating me I guess and I don't know why it was frustrating me as much as it did I think I'm gonna give this one a three star I do love her writing style like Catherine Center's writing is so easy it is so fast-paced you know you get really into the story like listening to it entertaining and I feel like if I kept reading it again I wouldn't have been invested but her writing style is really 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 good and I like reading I, even though I listen to it like I like her writing style I just think the storyline what it ended up being like wasn't for me I think it took like weird turn I also feel like there wasn't really much of a plot going on I don't really know I'm like conflicted on this one but I'm gonna sit at a three star it wasn't bad in any means I did not enjoy it it's just not my favorite and I think I had different expectations going into it but that's totally okay shout out to this mini book and rock paper scissors for choosing this one and also shout out bestie again for creating these for me wrapping them setting them over and taking the time to do this you are so amazing I cannot thank you enough it was so appreciated it was so fun doing this and now I have so so many mini books to do other things with maybe we'll try to find another type of video to do stuff with these mini books let me know if you guys have any other ideas i will link her shop again in the description go shop she has such cute stuff she is so kind so sweet and i loved these mini books this was such a fun video to film i hope you guys enjoyed let me know if you did let me know if you've read any of these mini books if you think i should read any of these mini books that i didn't pick that's all for me thank you guys again for watching again i hope you enjoyed and i will see you hopefully in the next one bye